And I think we're live. Ladies and gentlemen, 4 o'clock p.m., September 14th, 2023, Two Lane Life HQ, soon to be someone else's HQ because we're moving next week to a bigger and better studio, showroom, store, all that good stuff. Anyway, this episode is brought to you by Eagle Rider Motorcycle Rentals and Tours. Don't forget to check out TulaneLife.com under the Eagle Rider tab to see how you can book a trip, have some good times on two wheels or three, and save some money while you're at it. What's happening, boys? What are we doing today? Well, it's been crazy. We're moving. We're, he just said all that, but we've been working our butts off hauling things. Luck, luckily, it's only across the parking lot, so that's cool. But while that's going on, there's editing. We got the Sturgis drops are really fun, phenomenal stuff to watch. It's crazy. Well, we may have to go uh, dark next week, depending on whether we got the lighting guys or maybe we just do some lighting of our, self, of our own. If we're there, we uh, can do it. We can probably. Yeah, hopefully. But uh I'm really excited to unveil the studio. Josh did a, if you go to our Instagram story yesterday, did a little piece and we're working on the desk and uh, we're stepping it up to the next level. The shop is looking amazing. We've got this retail storefront. I mean, what do we have? Um, a six, 600 square foot oh, uh, at least, showroom? Yeah. Yeah. I Just mean, a showroom. It's great. And have a little bit of a writer lounge in there. Ah. Um, I got busy yesterday with John, uh, kind of going through the it stuff you guys watched the drop uh how was it i didn't get to watch it last night no no uh the drop was great last night was fun great stuff go back go to the youtube channel check out the videos next week it's going to be stepping it up by we might so we- next week we uh we had an interesting couple of days in sturgis the rain was doing its thing anyway we might do two drops next week and one on Wednesday, one on another day that we're still figuring out. So we'll see. One of them ended up being a little bit shorter, um, but the next one's killer. So, you know. Just stay tuned. Follow that stuff. Yeah. A lot of but, stuff going on. And you know what? If you're in the area, I mean, we had a guy come in our, our store today, wanted to hang out for a bit from the Philippines, him Mike. and his buddy. Mike, that was awesome. Um, so you could come by, have a cup of coffee, cold brew, watch Not some videos. Yet, but- no. Soon. Yes, in yes. a couple of weeks. Yeah, soon. But uh, look, I mean, we got a call uh, probably six weeks ago, I think it was, uh, from this guy by the name of Vince. And he's like, hey, you know uh, Mikey Tuttle? And we're like, yeah, we know Mikey Tuttle. We I go mean, way we, back. We watched that show <laughs> way back when. And and uh, pretty cool. We got to get on the phone with these guys, and we finally made it happen. They've got their own podcast going so we're going to jump these guys in, Mike and Al. A uh, little background you have over there, or are you good? Um, people are saying there's a little bit of echo. Really? No more echo. So Mac is the only one with an echo. Okay. <laughs> and I wasn't listening to what you just said. I was just introducing Mike and Al. All right. Well, Mike and Al from the Mikey, Mikey and Al from the Mikey and Al podcast, amongst other things, such as Orange County Choppers. They do a lot of different shit. And they're here to share it with us. And they're doing it live. They're doing it live. They're doing it live. <laughs> so without further ado, in. let's jump in, Mikey, now. What's happening, boys? Hey, gentlemen. Hey, gang. What's going How are on? you guys? <laughs> Not sure what to do with my hands. Yeah. <laughs> good. Good. Right. Where are you from? Oh. We have somebody already coming in already. Come on. We got Vinny yeah, Vinny in. just showed up. Vinny oh, Vinny's in the house, too, huh? Where, where's Vinny going to sit? Nobody. He's got his mask hey, on mule he's, he's, with him. He's hey, fashionably man. late. There he goes. Better than <laughs> hey, fashionably Vinny. absent. Oh. Yeah. Um, so Vinny's got a Moscow mule. I've got some uh, homemade moonshine. And uh, I've also got a, an IPA here called the Shaka. So he's okay. drinking two drinks. Jeez. That's a sign. That's <laughs> a fine. Hey, I Vinny. On that road, do you ever want to talk? I'll give you my number. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 We kicked. Any, about, uh, how long have you guys uh, been doing your uh, your uh, your podcast? Because we're just kicking off. We may need a little uh, schooling and tutelage here, but we're um, you know uh, what we're doing. I think well, initially it didn't even start as a podcast. We we're just kind of doing lives, talking about motorcycle parts and whatnot. Okay. And then, yeah, if you want a good laugh, uh, <laughs> take a look at our first couple of lives. Nah, it's, you don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking up our noses. I mean, it's just really funny as hell. Um, but but on a serious note, probably two years. Uh, we've been doing the YouTube deal for three and a half. 
Okay. Uh, and then started kind of using the Instagram live and, and YouTube live as a way to discuss parts and different topics. Um, okay. You know, and then it, once we started kind of the YouTube live, it's become, you know, we talk about writing all the time uh, with people, but the YouTube lives tend to be more about people themselves versus the rides. More um, of like a human touch. It yeah. Gets it's into the, what the hell's going on, man. We, we've know? had all sorts of guests that, and, and we talk a little bit about rides, but it's typically more about what are you guys up to? What are you doing? And, um, and it just, we, we try to be pretty consistent in what we do. So with the, with the drops on YouTube, uh, we haven't missed a week since March 7th of 2020 with the lives. We're a little bit, we've been pretty good, but we do occasionally miss, miss a live. Um, gotcha. Well, and, uh, in terms of, um, I, I think during the pandemic, I, I've known Mikey for about a decade. I know Vinny's known Mikey probably for, uh, the last, what, 30, 40, 30, forever, forever. forever. <laughs> And obviously the Orange County uh, Choppers, American uh, Choppers fame. Um, but Mikey and I really, I think over the pandemic, um, you know, we started talking. Mikey and I traveled a lot to Europe together. And we just, we started thinking about things and, and, and how we can, uh, you know, interact with people, obviously, in that uh, time frame. And um, we always sort of banter off new events and what's going on in the community, whether it be the biker community or just anything in general. So it was, it, it just uh, sort of evolved in that process flow. And um, I mean, so far it's been great. Um, and, um, you know, we just love being here and, and sharing with people uh, what we're doing. And a lot of it obviously is OCC and American shop. I mean, driven obviously Vinny is a huge part of that so we're very very happy that he's here today and um yeah we're just looking to uh get the word out there what we're doing and and get an idea of uh what you guys are doing and let's bring it all together for Whoop. sure so uh, Vinny I'm Galen this is Lance next to me Josh there's Josh our camera guy go. editor uh do everything, uh, fellow like you are the mechanic in OCC. Good to meet you guys. Good to yeah. meet you. Too. You know, so our thing is we started talking, and the more we started doing this and talking to people, we would get people on here that had, like, stuff that, that they were doing in their communities, charity stuff, people that were just amazing stories. And it started becoming this thing where, like, wow, we're talking to these people, and they really want to talk. I mean, our whole thing is shaking hands with America when we're out doing our tours and stuff. Really but cool. it's like people want to talk, you know, and we, we came out with, Hey, we're here to inspire you to get out and find the open road and just be good people in whatever you're doing. And it's like, we've gotten so much inspiration from people. We're doing more and crazier stuff. And it's just like, it's amazing what happens. I mean, Lance and I have been riding together for 10 years. Um, and at first it was just here in Southern California, you have a lot of riding spots to go to and, go down to the beach for a Saturday afternoon run or something. And then it was like, uh, maybe we should go spend the night somewhere and get out further and see what the country's like. And then it was like, Hey, we can do 500 miles pretty easily in a day. Let's get out further and see. And, and by doing that, we get into these smaller towns and we'd come back to our families and we'd have these amazing stories of these little towns that are trying to survive on what used to be, you know, uh, vacation time and things like that and, and destination points but freeways kind of bypassed them and so they're still trying to struggle for tourism um, yeah. but they wanted to talk to us and so when we came back our families you know just like you guys have to find a way to tell these stories and i'm a banker by trade uh, lance has been an entrepreneur by trade he's got a company called setware that he does stuff in the industry for gip grips and gaffers mm -hmm. um we came together three years ago and said, let's start it. I left banking. He still got the company. We started this thing and it, it was to inspire people to get out and travel, but the stories that we get back and the, the stuff that's happening with us right now is more of an inspiration to us about fathers and sons riding together about getting their first Harley or getting their first motorcycle or 
you know, re rekindling their fire to write. So it's just been kind of an insane platform to, to really talk through and, and share stories with people. I think that's awesome. For sure. I mean, yeah. in terms of how do you guys map out your trips? Are you guys just throwing out? I mean, it seemed, what I'm seeing or what I've seen, um, you know, on your page, first of all, the, just the, you know, the cinematography, the video is just off the hook. So how are you guys putting that together? Because it's, it's, it's almost like, it looks like you guys have drones flying over. It's just, it's, it's so no, we, we, we're, <laughs> we're independently wealthy. So we yeah, have right. helicopters and shit going around. Nah. It's like dudes hanging yeah. off of, of uh, bungee cords. We got three dudes and a couple of cameras. So usually we, we the drone over camera, but we, we love what we're doing. We're all creative in our own way. And we like to find different things and show people perspective <laughs> of not just, I mean, it's three guys and sometimes our wives ripping down the highway and going play. I mean, our wives now, People call them the two lane wives and they've been in airports without us. And people have come up to them and said, you're the two lane wives, you know? So it's like, how bizarre, but we have a unique thing because it's a group of us and it's 24 seven. Now we have, we we meet at the store, we ride motorcycles, we don't have cars. And it's like, you go this three, three and a half years. Now we're working with Harley Davidson. We're working with Eagle rider. We, we have, it's turned into this thing where people, it's just amazing. We had a guy that traveled the country, grew his hair for a couple of years and then wanted to donate it. And so he calls us and wants to come in the studio, have someone come in and cut his hair off wigs for kids with cancer stuff. Their founder comes on and this wasn't planned. It wasn't any other than him coming in. Next thing you know, people are donating on our channel to get to wigs for kids. So this stuff happens all this fate that's been happening to us is mind blowing. So back to the original question. Um, we usually sit down in November and, and start planning rides. And then we'll, as the ride gets closer, we'll kind of map out where we want to go. We usually have an idea. We know the first day for sure, but then we kind of just free flow from there. Uh, the cinematography is really a credit to the guy that's got the headphones on. Um, he's, he's put that stuff together. And so we, we're not typical YouTube. It's not clickbait. It's, 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 we're lucky to have, we're not, we're not only lucky, we we actually invested in the, the two lane life around having something feel more travel oriented and make you want to get out and go there. So history food. <clears throat> so we're kind of, we're kind of really excited about that. But I, I want to flip the channel a little bit. So, you know, Mikey and, and Vinny and you guys are OCC through and through. So you guys had a good run there. And and so, you know, talk a little bit about how that was for you guys being in the limelight. And, and then I, I kind of want to get into kind of the, the Mikey Al between the lines or inside the lines discussion as well. That was horrible. <laughs> I don't like to talk about it. Uh, no. Next question. I can't speak for Vin, but if he says a word, I'm going to cave his head in. <laughs> Vin, everybody. Vin, uh, Vin, you, Vin you, you could probably tell a lot. I mean, I'm both sorry. you guys could. I could. I, mean, I, could, give, I could tell give, stories give, all day. Give, give him back to the Vinny community. remembers more than I, I do. I think Vinny could, in terms of giving back to community men and, and, and how much Senior was involved with, you know, the military and whatnot, and a lot of the bikes you, you guys did. Yeah. Don't you give us... It was, it was well, I'm, to I'm, I'm going to say mine and then Mikey's experience are probably somewhat different, uh, except for when we were on the road because uh, we were always together. But when we were at the shop, Mikey, well, you weren't really you weren't in the same position as, as I was. No, not so at all. He was uh, he was more of the entertainment. Yeah. Kept my head on straight. Yeah, they rolled me out of bed with a hangover and dragged me in there. Just say this. <laughs> say it. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was kind of crazy, you know. I'm, I was just a local grease monkey my whole life, you know. Rode dirt bikes since I was three and was a motorhead. He's a pretty, yeah. pretty special guy, too, because a lot of motorheads, they don't have much personality. I don't know if you guys <laughs> noticed that. Right, right. Well, it's not that they're bad people or anything. It's just not, they're not really, you know, focused towards entertainment. Yeah. They're into the bike I mean, and making a run. But Vin, Vin's a beauty. Look at him. Look at that smile. <laughs> you something from him? <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was gonna say GQ. 
<laughs> What's that? Some Little the, New York GQ. Some of the Vin, some of the the bikes that you know, obviously uh, OCC created. I mean, for um, you know. Uh, to get back to the community, I mean, I know you're involved with. What was, yeah, yeah, like what was, a lot of a couple Make a Wish bikes. Um, right. We did one for the um, what was that the um, the military when we were down in uh, Virginia Beach. Uh-huh. Uh huh. What is it? Uh, I don't remember the organization. Oh, uh, no. uh, injured vet. injured vets. Yeah, it was um, injured vets. It wasn't. Uh, we did yeah. the one with um, uh, the football dude. The big dude, um, Jared Allen. Jared Allen. Uh, Wounded Warriors. Wounded Warriors. Oh, yeah, that's a big we one. did them. That that was a that was a really good one. Of course, like even oh, the nine eleven bike, right? Nine eleven bike. Oh, that's really that, that was amazing. We did one for the police. Yep. Um, a Make a Wish Foundation. Make a Wish. Yeah, we did a yeah. bunch of Make a Wish. Yeah. So it was cool uh, doing all that stuff because you know you get so inundated <laughs> with doing all these commercial builds and there's big companies and you know and it's just boom 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 one after another and then you get something like that and it really means something so yeah that was a really nice break in between the stuff and even when we did the giveaway bikes remember we gave away four of those bikes we did to random people yeah I think one of the people they were we didn't do any of the picking they didn't post production but i think one of the people were actually rich yeah yeah that <laughs> was to give that him a bike a away they, the guy lives in like he lives in like a million dollar community. house that was a little awkward, yeah, because it's like, I mean, Mike, was, was that, did you choose that one or? In, no, that was, that was those post production. I think they just it was the first four that came yeah. in. I know. mean, arguably, you know, you're trying to find people that would never experience any of this stuff, right? Right. <laughs> How did they choose that though? Good. What did they do? They just pull that out of a hat? I, I I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> that was my pay grade. <laughs> oh yeah, that was a process for really for the production company. I mean, how long ago was that? I remember the show and watched the show, but I don't even remember how when it was. Ten years oh. ago, fifteen years ago, you know. Okay, oh, I was on it from the end of '02 till December of 2012 was the last time I was ever on. Gotcha. Is that when the show was done, or did it keep going? Oh no, well, it was kind of done. The 2012 was the biker build off, the last biker build off we did in Vegas. And I was never on it again. I think they did some stuff with maybe TMC. Am I right, Mike? After that? Uh, yeah, my father, I believe, um, got his own show with TMC. And then they, they also tried to do another one. TM TMC? CMT. CMT, thank there you. There we yes. go. So we well, that's what it was. It's like it was a country music, camp, right? It was yeah. a TM, yes. And then they did another one, though. They got it going a little bit because your brother came and asked me to be part of it. And I There was just, a little revamp last two seasons. Yeah, well, gotcha. And I well, just don't think they get along. It <laughs> had to be a little wild being, you know, in the limelight for that long. And and we recently did a piece with Jay Leno, and I noticed you were on his talk show. You were on David Letterman, so you had this notoriety and this fame. Uh, it's for us. It's been kind of new. Like, you know, we've we've in the motorcycle industry. There's so many people that come up and want to take pictures and get an autograph and. And it's just like, this is three and a half years. And like, what the hell's going on here? Yeah. Um, but it's, it's, you guys had a good run there. And so now you're back at the table doing some podcasts. So what, what's the, how did the name come about? And what's the vibe on the podcast? If you could share with people and share where they can find you as well. So we'll do this a couple times. Sure. Uh, as they listen, they can jump out and check you out. We have links in the, in the post is in the bio as well. Oh, beautiful. Uh, Mikey and L podcast. Dot, dot, yeah, Mikey. Um, yeah, we got Vin. Mike, yeah, got Vin got handles Vin. all that. Mikey, well, a, Mikey, the letter N, Mikey N L podcast. So, yeah. I mean, there was a period of time I think Mike was sort of almost locked up, right? Um, well, he really. I guess uh, post show, yeah, they kind of get yeah, it out to show for a while. Up. He really couldn't, you know, <laughs> the whole contractual kind of bullshit and all that kind of stuff. Yep. Didn't really do anything. Yeah, and then, tie um, your hands. My hands were tied for a bit. Well, you're, see, see, yeah. you've been, I, I quit Orange County Choppers in August of 2007. I walked off the show. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And they had me locked up in non-competes and all this stuff. And I feel like I was kind of blacklisted because I had so many people come and talk to me and then just boom would get shut down at, like out of nowhere. So, um, yeah. I just did my own thing, and then it was in the late 09 where your brother confronted me again about doing the junior versus senior. And oh, I, I, yeah, 
And then we so did that, that fall apart pretty quick. I mean, where'd that go? Man? Let me dig. Yeah. <laughs> so you got dad and two brothers. Are you guys cool or are you not cool at this point in life? Well, it depends with, I mean, I, when I left in 2007 and then I went back in 2009, my agreement was with, I had my own business. I, my agreement was with discovery. I wasn't ever going to do anything with OCC again. Um, I, you know, I get along with junior, I get along with everybody at the shop, you know, unfortunately I just, I won't. So there's no, is there Sunday barbecues or nah? Uh, I, I, I won't work with his old man. I'm sorry, Mikey. <laughs> no, I don't apologize. <laughs> yeah. He won't work with me. No, I'll, I'll work with you. No, you will, but he won't. In terms of how Mike and I mean, I travel, I mean, we, Mike and I travel a lot to Europe. I know um, Vin did as well, but we did a lot of Germany events. So there's a bit, I don't know if you guys have ever been, have you guys ventured outside of the United States yet? In terms Just of Canada. Okay. We've not gone across the pond yet. Oh, the pond is unbelievable. I mean, we. I mean, I just I just got back from France and Italy, but it wasn't on bikes. It was just hanging out for anniversary fun. But did you ride any scooters? No, but I filmed some scooters doing some crazy shit. I dug it. Yeah, I rode scooters in Italy, man. It was it was crazy. We rode in Australia. Oh, wow. And he's got a great story about a gentleman he met on the street. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. You got to tell that one because I don't remember this one. Which one? I invited you into the house. Oh, the one in Italy. He's playing an art film. <laughs> oh. TV. I don't know that's a fair way to talk about hey, this. <laughs> Come on, Ben. Let it loose, baby. He's playing one of those artistic European films. Right, I'll, I'll tell the story. I'll tell the story. It's really um, uh, so the, the Italian people were just, they were so friendly. But, you know, everything shuts down so early. And we were trying to get wine. And after all the little corner, you know, shops shut down. We're trying to get wine, and we're just walking around the street. We don't speak Italian. We're just asking, Vino, Vino, you know, Vino. And this, this guy is just – he couldn't speak English. He invites us up to his house, and he brings out wine and, you know, all these Italian meats and cheeses and everything. He's, like, hosting me and my – it's actually his cousin Shane. We're up there, and uh, we're like, man, this guy's great, you know. So we're drinking wine with him and everything. And I, I said to Shane, I was like, you know, I wonder if this guy thinks that, you know, they we're coming on to him or something, you know? So we're trying to explain that we like women. So the guy goes, he goes in and grabs some porns, <laughs> Italian porns, 70s, and puts them on. <laughs> so we can't even communicate. So we're like sitting in this Drinking wine, watching Italian porn. Mink, yeah, mink, yeah. yeah. Hey, that, that was the story. So he, down, sent us, he sent us home. He sent us home with a couple bottles of wine. Yeah, and two of the tape. Uh, there's more to the story. Yeah, there might be. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you though to round back to uh, Germany. I mean, Mikey and I. Um, if you have been yeah, what do you guys do there? Yeah, there's. Uh, we've been to there. They just got done with a, um, a, a just a huge bike event. Uh, it's called actually Fak Amse, F A A K A M S E E, and that was out of Austria. And it's almost like the sound of music backdrop. Yeah. In terms of how beautiful it is, it's right there, and there's a beautiful lake right there. There's probably about two hundred thousand um, attendees. Uh, and, you know, they come all throughout Europe and whatnot. Um, and it's amazing some of the bikes that you see over there from any kind of genre that you that you can imagine, uh, the fabricators that are over there. And due to the OCC brand, you know, obviously OCC was over here for a long period of time in terms of, you know, being on uh, on TV. But, you know, there's sort of a lag time. So. OCC is still really, really um, well known and prevalent over there. So you know, we went over there, and I was over there with um, Mikey and and Senior, and obviously they're very, very uh, well receptive. And it's just the community over there is just huge. I didn't realize mm. when we got off that plane, and it's been a couple of. I think the last time I went to Fonkham was a couple of years ago. Yep, but. Um, the community over there, as far as the bike community, is just unbelievably huge. Uh, huh. They have Harley uh, Hamburg Days. They have Intermot. Um, There's just such a huge um, community, just like we have over here, 
over there. So we've traveled over there quite often. Um, and that's some, if you guys can experience it at some point in time, I know I'm sure you guys done the, you know, Daytona Sturgis and all that Laconia, but, um, it's just a different vibe. I think, um, over there, uh, well, we get people from all over, not better or worse, just different. Yeah. We get people from all over the world that show up here. Right. Germany, uh, Denmark, Philippines today, Australia, and they, they're all about the moto community. Yeah. We have some stuff in the works that we're talking about to get over there and ride. We already have bikes that we could get. The whole thing is just getting the time and doing it. Right. You know. I think there was a question. Was that for them, I assume, right? Yeah. Why I did think- you start your podcast? Oh, we just recently started that. Why? Oh, why? Uh, no. Well, oh, why? Al and I, our why? buddies, we were having a great conversation. We were laughing about stories, you know? That was yeah. like, well, you know, why not? You know, uh, why start it, doing it, a podcast? It predominantly, I think, it, it, it really came to fruition because, I mean, uh, Mike, we, we've we've had funny stories. Actually, Vin turned me down. So Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was second fiddle. No, no. But um, <laughs> the I think it was the pandemic just, you know, really trying to determine um, – yeah, it was just crazy. Just talking about stuff, making fun of shit that was going on in the world and whatnot, and 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 just realizing that uh, you know every time we talked, we would just have a great time and we'd laugh our ass off. And like, you know, people doing podcasts. Obviously, OCC is a very well-known brand. Mikey's known out there in the industry. We just um, trying to lily pad. Yeah, we yeah. So, you know? frog. Uh, you no, know it is. Yeah. We're leveraging Mike. That's what we're doing. That's basically what we're doing. Well, that's perfect. I mean, he's a good guy to leverage, right? <laughs> but we enjoy what we're doing. But and Mikey depends on the crowbar. <laughs> well, I kind of, I kind of watched <laughs> one. We're using things that strippers were, were. Uh, what were they doing to you? Strippers? Yeah, they were. They were terrifying you or something. You had to go under the pool table. Oh, I, on on the show. Yeah, it was on your podcast. You were saying that they were uh, pressuring you to pay them. Or was that the Between the Lines podcast? Uh, maybe that was Between the Lines. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know what? I, I could have been pleading the fifth on that one. Between the Lines and Mike. I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't re- recall saying that. I don't recall. I don't recall. Gotcha. That. Okay, well, we'll move on to the next one. No, I'm just kidding. But if yeah, there's any stories, with- <laughs> Benny and Mike, they got, uh, they got. I mean, these two. Um, I mean, they've been everywhere. They, these two, have some uh, uh, phenomenal stories together. Um, what about any Sturgis stories uh, or Laconia stories? Actually, Benny? tell me more about these strippers that were uh, that had me pinned <laughs> down. You were, saying, you were you were saying on the thing that you were uh, you're the DD now, so you could take your friends to the stripper place. But when you would sit in the corner, not partaking in the street they'd make you pay for an eight dollar drink and then you had to give them like 20 bucks and they were pressuring you oh yeah that yeah episode. that was high yeah. pressure yeah. i get dragged to a strip club every now and again with like a, a married friend who's just there right mind, you know? no, nothing about you you were clean and good a, no i don't care to maintain my image that much <laughs> <laughs> look at me if you if you're trying to do that you failed <laughs> uh uh, uh, yeah. When you talk about Laconia and Sturgis and all that, you know, we do go to Sturgis every year. We've been going for a long time. We're not big rally guys. We did go to Daytona and now like, you know, Harley might say, Hey, go to Daytona. We want to see you there, that type of stuff. But yeah. we're more about, Hey, we're going to go beat route 66 down. We're going to have a great time. We're going to go to page Arizona and stay there for a week and talk to restaurant owners and business owners and, and people we go there and it's like, next thing you know, you're meeting people, the mayor and this and that. And then a guy, we couldn't get in the dam cause it was on a lockdown. It's been on lockdown for two years. And then the chief of police sees us walk into the place and he's like blown away and he's like oh my god i've been following you guys for two years i have gifts for you and next thing you know hey we're down in the dam and they're like well you can't really do this in the dam and then this guy makes a phone nick then the next thing you know we're in the dam down at the bottom of the dam we're on the lake like so stuff happens and then a guy says hey this guy has an atv shop call him we call him (laughs) up boom 
come out. I'm going to take you for a ride through the desert. And then next thing you know, we're shooting machine guns and, and yeah, shooting that's range. nothing like getting vino from Italian guys. Yeah, that's definitely that watching more. porn on the couch together. Come on. <laughs> so stuff that was, happens. That was but we're more about traveling. That, you know? that, that was pre OCC, but that traveling stuff you're talking about, I'm not a big rally guy either. But I'll tell you what, like Sturgis is one of my favorite because yep. I don't hang around Sturgis per se. You know, um, it's rotting all in the area around there. It's just, it's amazing. Absolutely. So, well, we, Deadwood hanging out. We used to hang out in Deadwood a lot more than Sturgis. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what we do. We get a we house do. there every year and we hang out in Deadwood. And, and you know, Devil's oh. Tower, all that stuff, man. Seeing the Buffalo, that was amazing. Yeah. So a, a year and a half ago, roughly, we did uh, we did Milwaukee to Maine, and we did upstate New York, and went up into Niagara, and uh, then dropped down into to Rhode Island and so forth. But um, we traveled there many times. That was the only time we rode. We should. I'd like to check out Laconia. Is it worth it, guys? I'll be honest. I have never been to Laconia. Every time it was Laconia, really? something happened in my life where I couldn't go. <laughs> well, I'm in New England all the time. I'm in Rhode Island. I'm in Maine. Yeah. yeah never done the, the Laconia Rally. You? Gotcha. Where are we? Laconia. Who? Oh, <laughs> New Hampshire. Uh, where are we? <laughs> Wait, there you uh, go. That's part of the podcast right there. No, yeah, Laconia. Laconia, Laconia I've been to it twice. It, it was wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. You go up there, it's man. Nice. It's beautiful. New England. Nice and New cool. England's beautiful. So and give it's us, during fall time, I believe, right? Give us a Laconia story. Let's hear you're coming in. So what's the concept? You're going oh, in with OCC. No, I got drunk there, did karaoke, and I threatened an 86-year-old man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can. Hold on. Mike, wait, I, where I, didn't we do karaoke? What, is, what did you threaten? Right? Everywhere, you baby. Everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. We well, karaoke. we do it, too. We man. do it, too. We're sort of karaoke. Man. Okay, but I want to go back to that one. So Laconia, what's the setup? So you're there. You there, got, you got to do the autograph. What are you going to do? So the autographs we're doing at some kind of video game place, uh huh. You know, where they had like um, really cool, fun video games there to I'm play with that night. There with you. Oh, yeah. uh, it stunk. <laughs> I mean, but it was awesome. No, it, it was, uh, you know, if you're if you're there for the nightlife, it's not there, you know, it's not rocking and rolling. But if you like riding and everything like that, and the kind of you know, uh, yeah, camaraderie riding, thing, I would imagine the riding's pretty nice there. It's beautiful, yeah. Yeah. Well, where was it? You guys were saying Sturgis is where you guys were on two separate tables who were doing autographs. You guys, you no, guys, no, that was Daytona. That we was were, Daytona. Yeah, we you were never separate. Did Laconia, huh? No, I never did Laconia. Can you okay. believe Okay, must have been at the same time so, as something else. So, yeah. give these guys a Daytona story. Anything? Uh, I remember when we had? Remember when we had that work truck? Work and, truck. and we were going up and down Main Street, and we had like ten people in the back of that that I, big Chevy. Yeah, we were blowing, blow, we were blowing <laughs> diesel smoke all over the place. All, and people were like attacking the truck because uh, there was Mikey was in the bed of the truck. I was driving, uh -huh. and he had one of the megaphones. Do you remember that, Mike? Uh -huh. you were yelling, hey, everybody! You, I don't remember what you were yelling. You're like, Vince is driving, oh, yeah. and he's getting everybody riled oh. up, and they're trying to crowd around this truck. And uh, I remember I was just holding it off rev limiter and blowing black <laughs> soot <laughs> all, <laughs> because they just. They, <laughs> And they were and liking then, it. And then you know, remember, back, then, remember we <laughs> back then you could do that. Remember we left and that guy was messing with us in that Suburban and I freaking cut him off. Oh, that medium. was the first time I'd ever seen Vinny really lose his shit. I haven't yeah. seen it like he was like an ape. He was ripping seats out of the place, you know, <laughs> out, of, out of the truck, you know. And he was, this guy was, uh, what was he saying? In, he was but Vin was like, you mother effer, I'm going to kill you, man. <laughs> you know, pull over, I'll kill you. Because he's I don't ever, got I don't ever super lose strength. My, I don't lose my temper. Rarely. Rarely. Never seen it. Because I remember after that, you were like, Vince, I've never seen you like that before. Holy shit. He had to calm down. This guy just pushed my buttons. That perfect right? storm. That was funny. Well, that can happen in Daytona. Yeah. Trust me, we've been there. There's not much else to do. Right. No, there's not. The riding sucks. You go down one road, go to Mocha State Park, go down that. Well, you see the nice trees. You see the intercoastal. It's cool. Then you're done. Yeah, exactly. Uh, up St. Augustine. You got to do the loop. Oh, St. Augustine's beautiful. My it's parents a, it's a nice ride right up there. there forever we've lived down there well my parents did so we used to do a lot of traveling down there but like i said it's just the riding is just very generic just flat do you do rides where you actually go the distance and ride not, or not nearly as much as i like i live i ride with a lot of fair weather riders we go um every year we, we go up to uh, just north of binghamton new york which is it's only like maybe a three-hour drive and we do this we call it a camp ride and it gets pretty rowdy we just go out to in the middle of nowhere with tents and tent 
and you know come back and you know we hit a bunch of bars and stuff on the way and you know it's fun but we don't really do a lot of long riding i was gonna ask i you guys, want to do more long riding what you guys must have how many miles you guys put in, uh, i mean what's your uh how many how many days during the month are you on the road i mean you guys seem to be pretty good amount i mean we we ride full time but like on our way home from sturgis for the hell of it where there was eight of us we busted out like 1100 miles from deadwood to vegas in a day in a day in 15 hours yeah that's that's a good ride yeah that's a that's a ride you do in a car when you're when you're cranking right (laughs) we probably do uh a good solid week a month you know i mean we kind of figured early on like we would go out on the weekend and then try to get content and it was like you know, we've got a store here as well. So how do you man the store and keep things? Then it's like, yeah, of course. That's why don't we just thing. go out? Why don't we go out for a week and get seven or eight episodes, and then we can stay in the shop for three weeks? Um, we probably, out, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 And we I mean, run- and there's only three of us, so it's like when we're gone, we're gone. So we've just recently right. hired someone. We got Paul, uh, Paul, uh, Mr. Nacho. So he's going to take care of the biz while we're gone. But uh, we probably do. Last year, we probably did fifty thousand miles, mm. uh, and that includes you know using Harley Media bikes and Eagle Rider bikes. Um, like we did a three thousand mile loop on Eagle Rider, so. Not always on our own bikes, but uh, we do between 50 and 60 a year. And we ride in the rain, snow, wind, dust, heat, you name it. We there's don't like, stop. There's, there's like a club for that, isn't it? What is that called? It's like the iron, psychopath. Iron butt challenge. But <laughs> yeah, we don't, we, we, yeah, we do our own iron butts because that, that one, which is great, and people should sign up for it and do their thing, but – uh, you got to have gas receipts and you got to send it in and you get a certificate, which is kind of cool. But we just ride. We what don't. Are you, what are you riding? Road glides, street road glides, glides, two different. road glides and a road king. Okay. But you know, we've been on the road ripping down the highway yeah. and all of a sudden we get a DM or a message on the Instagram and it's like, hey, my group of guys just drove by. We saw you guys and we see you're going up I 10. You should turn left up here and go to this whiskey pete's something and the next next right. thing you know we're like well we're not going that way but fuck it let's go that way we do <laughs> it. Yeah, you don't know what's gonna happen yeah. yeah it's gonna take you somewhere cool i think yeah. that's all and the let me okay so out of the three uh, you guys seem to have let's say somebody who has not traveled or been able to have the opportunity to be on a bike and and let's say cross the united states what would what would maybe your top two or three that so far from a scenery kind of point of view well, you know, what states, what states? Hard, hard to say. I mean, I love Arizona, but the hard thing about it is we come off these trips and we're like, that was the best run we've ever been on. And then we go on another trip and we're like, that was the best run. So every trip offers you some kind of experience. Yeah. You're like, wow. Well, but I'll, I have to tell you, we went up to Canada this year and went up into Banff and then up to Jasper and did the Icefields Parkway, which you're, you're, what you're looking at there is glaciers that are 100, 200 feet deep, and you've got waterfalls, and it's just insanely beautiful. And then we dropped down into upstate Washington, and we were in, like, the fern gully with pine trees, and it was just insane. So is that like the Canadian Rockies up, in, up through yeah, there? Canadian Rockies, yeah. And, and I those grew up were, in Utah with the, yeah. with the Rocky I heard, Mountains. I heard that they blows so away the, the Rockies here. Yeah, completely, yeah, different. completely different. Yeah, I mean plus. Grand Canyon. If you haven't seen the Grand Canyon, I mean shit, you got to see the Grand Canyon. It'll blow your mind. Yeah, bike or car or bus, who gives a shit? But right. when you walk up on that thing, what's the movie with uh, Ed? What's the what's the one where he's in the bubble? <laughs> I know, Mike. You should know the bubble movie. boy. Bubble boy, no, no, no. <laughs> where where uh, what's his name? Jim Carrey's inside, and he realizes he's sitting inside of a bubble. It's all being filmed. Oh, oh, uh, the Truman Show. Show. Yeah, there, there you, you go. go. Got it. With the Grand Canyon, you walk up and go, that cannot be real. Yeah. It looks like a movie set. I t- I tell you one. We the- flew low over the Grand Canyon before. I've never been there. Uh, that we're supposed to be doing it this year, 
Well, when, when you walk up, we've been there hundreds of times. Every time I walk up to the edge of the canyon, you get this feeling of like, wow. Man, you know? you probably get a feeling of that you're nothing. Yeah. You're and we've been on every rim. Anyways. <laughs> North, I mean, just, it's so massive. It's a it's, deep reminder. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. I it like is that. magnificent, isn't it? Boy, we could dove into that later. I will. I will tell you though. There, I'm I haven't been up in that. I, I'm. I'm. I'm sure. I mean, it's just unbelievable. But uh, there was, there was two uh, events that uh, Mike and I were able to go to on two different occasions. Um, it was called Harley and Snow, um, and what it is, it's actually in uh, in an area called uh, Bricks in Italy. And it's almost like in the Italian Alps, the the Dolomites. Um, and we played, and we stayed at this place, and we became friends. Um, shout out to Plunhof. Remember that place? Ah, uh, Plunhof. Wonderful when I'm hotel, telling you, resort. I've never seen such a beautiful scenery in terms of um, um, what it has to offer. But the entire um, the entire premise of the event is. Um, bikes, they have the knobby tires, and what they're trying to do is they're trying to climb, you know, obviously. Um, Hill you know, climb? There you go. Um, and it a was lot of failures. A lot of failures. Very yeah. entertaining. Very entertaining. So yeah. we took a helicopter ride around, uh, you know, uh, the Italian Alps, and I, I don't think I've ever seen anything as beautiful as that kind of. Yeah, the Alps are pretty oh. amazing. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, that same helicopter ride. I almost threw up over. on a couple of teenage yeah, girls. <laughs> and then I got off. They looked at me like, ooh. And I was like, that's um, true. Got off. Too. <laughs> Another place I went that's pretty amazing, Mike. And I, I don't know if you went in a helicopter with us. Remember we went to Gateway, Colorado? No. They, that's where the, the owner of Discovery lived. Okay. And we were doing the unveil for the Loopster bike. You remember that? The mm. five wheel bike we did. <laughs> so there's like three three things now i don't remember yeah. at all <laughs> so anyway um gateway colorado is just it's a little town right where four states meet right there four and corners it, yeah it's it's gorgeous and they took us up in a helicopter and we just it was amazing i mean it's not the grand canyon but it's a lot of that kind of scenery yeah and there's a place where you can go where you fly over and there's still fossilized dinosaur footprints in wow. some of the rocks that's where it's been on earth and stuff it was a, that that was pretty amazing but yeah that sounds pretty cool for sure it was i feel like an ass i mean we're sitting here you know, i we, feel like a bigger asshole no, i don't, I don't remember that there, these no, guys these guys are traveling I, I might not have gone on the that. united states doing what, 50 food. fucking thousand miles oh. a, a year Seeing everything oh, man, I have yeah. under God's creation. And, uh, we're like, uh, whatever. I'm gonna go do that photo <laughs> album. I'm gonna go do that photo album. See, see if you were there. All right. I don't. I don't, I don't think I was. I don't remember. Well, you, something you usually rings a bell. Yeah. 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 We were on the road, man, blazing. You guys I got, know. I got man. It's beautiful being out there, ain't it, man? You're freaking, oh. <laughs> freaking awesome. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're, you're, one other. You. You guys said you were. Um, you had the opportunity to meet Jay Leno, correct? Yeah, we yeah. did a whole thing. Were you in his garage? Or did you? Yeah. Get to oh, yeah. How was it? I mean, what awesome, was insane. You know what's great about Jay Leno? He he knows every car and bike. He's got hundreds of them. It is. He uses them all. He yeah. knows how to start them all. He's he. He's, there is not a museum of don't touch. But you have to understand this too, like. You know, these are carbureted bikes. They they have different. Every one of them's different. They're from Germany, from France, from. They all have different ways for the. It's, it's just insane that he can walk up to every single bike or car and tell you something about it. And, and we talked to him about what happens when he passes and what happens with the car collection. And he said it was not his problem, but. You have to understand this too. I, I kind of asked him about you, would this be like a museum thing? And he's like, I, he said, hopefully, hope hopefully not. I'm not sharing too much, but he said, I hope not. But the, those are his cars, those yeah. are his motorcycles. This, this is not a guy that's just like collecting and hoarding. He's collecting, preserving, and he, he writes, he'll take his $4 million uh, Ferrari out, 1976 Ferrari out, and ride around through the canyons. 
you know, or drive around through. So he uses them. He loves them. You know, we, we pitched uh, to get 45 minutes with him. We pitched, you know, 45 minutes for B roll. Mm -hmm. Um, we ended up spending three hours with him. It was fantastic. He likes sharing. He likes to talk, let you know what's up. We're trying to do another thing where we, he takes us for a ride in a car. And, you know, it'll be pretty well, interesting. He probably knows, you know, somebody who appreciates also. Um, you guys can smell bullshit, Yeah, you right? can smell bullshit. Right. You know, people, people who are just, you know, sitting there. Can, yeah, I'm sure he appreciates that, and, and and that's why he gave you the time he did. Now I know he's got a place in Rhode Island. Um, uh, where was it? Island. Where was it? Where did you guys meet about California? Burbank. This is Burbank, California. Yeah. And here's the yeah. funny thing: we're sitting at the gate waiting to get through. He rolls up on an electric motorcycle with his helmet, and he get these Harleys out of here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's when you know you got money when you can do. But stuff. He, he's riding, and he's like, you know. I mean, it's just he's such a. Motor, us, right? He was very, very uh, welcoming. He was he was incredibly gracious to us. Uh, so nothing but good things to say about him. I mean, he we went to they invited us out to go see it, get a tour of it, mm -hmm. and supposedly he wasn't there, but his assistant showed us the whole thing, took all this time with us, and I think they that was their way of saying when we were gone, all right, these guys are legit. You know, you know, maybe they were vetting us let, a little let, bit. Yeah, they yeah. vetted us, let us come back. And like two days later, I get a phone call, unknown caller. I never answer those. And I picked it up and looked at it and went, put my phone down. I'm not answering that. And then I'm like, eh, pick it up. And I get, hey, Lance, it's Jay Leno. You know, what you got to come out. And I was like, whoa, what the? <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm waiting for my phone to ring with Mikey on the other line saying, hey, let's get together. Well, I think I'll call you tomorrow morning. <laughs> I, I think Mikey's going to come and go for a ride with us. Number. Well, wait a minute. He's got a Jay Leno's time. You did the Jay Leno. What did you do, Jay Leno, a couple times? Yeah, we did. A letter, yeah, we yeah. built them a bike too. We went out there. Yeah, Vinny and I met Sugar Ray, the lead singer. Oh, Sugar Ray yeah, remember there. that? Uh, Mark Mark McGrath. Yeah, yeah. Mark McGrath. Yeah. Vinny, were you there? I didn't yeah, know he that. was doing a, a warm up. You know, what and, was cool. Uh, that he was said hello first, to us. That was, was the first. Flattering and I met Burt Reynolds that day. Burt Reynolds. Really? Yeah. yeah, that yeah. Was, wow. I'm not a big, like, you know, I don't really go I crazy love, over meeting famous people, but Burt Reynolds was my idol since I was He's born. A man's man, right? Yeah. yeah. Between yeah. Hooper, Smokey yeah. the Band. Oh, and Gator. Yep, yep. Oh, my goodness. And I just grew up with that. When I met him, I was like, my life's complete. I got the greatest picture. You with know Semi Tough? No. Oh, it's another football movie that Burt did. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, like, well, you know like what? It's, yeah, they made it's a, kind of like you know how the mustache, remake of it. The mustache sort of went out for a minute, but Bert, it always carries that much. Yeah. Bert, yeah. Bert, Bert Selleck, was the man. right? And those yeah. two guys, yeah. those are the men's men. Bert and my father had, right? Am I wrong? They had the same laugh. Yeah, they my same father exact used to. Laugh. Yeah, they used to. Uh, ha, ha. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful laugh. Yeah. yeah. Hey, that was a good job. He's of that down. Well, I don't know. I, I, you know, we grew up in California, LA, so it's like movie stuff. Meeting people is like, eh. But I definitely would like to meet Clint Eastwood. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. 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 That's, That's a good show. one. He has his faculties anymore. Yeah. He's, he's, he's 93. 93. I saw something yeah. with him the other day, and he's just kind of going. Yeah. He's getting old. He's oh, what, a, what a run. What a yeah, run that guy's What a run. Yeah. For sure. Any which way you can and any which way but loses. Oh, oh yeah. my God. Yeah, that I love that. Yes. Hey, you guys out there know the Jerky Boys. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, of course. Of course. They, were, they, were, yeah. they were local boys yeah. for here. Sizzle chest. Come on, sizzle chest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Look at him. Come down and put a craftsman wrench in your chest. <laughs> Shout out Jerky Boys, the daughter <laughs> of Johnny. Push your face in the hood. The daughter <laughs> of Johnny works. Car. I don't, no, know. I don't swear of it. I don't. Even I mean, that's that. when you could prank phone call, right? Yeah, yeah that, that had to be like thirty years yeah, ago. Is that like yeah, like at least that got, in, that got in early, and that was and that they, went like viral movie. before they, viral they was viral. <laughs> Everybody, yeah, they had they had their moment. They, they did had, have a oh, movie, they, which, that which was, has its strong points. It's I remember funny. I used to, I was working on my father's <laughs> office at the time at a Walkman. I used to listen to them the whole time. The Walkman. Well, people yeah. caught on to that because remember, after a period of time, you could prank call, but then you know, after a period of years, everybody's like, yeah. "Okay, it's all bullshit." But at first, you could, yeah. 
You can, oh, yeah. You, oh, yeah. You, you pretty much, they made a career out of that, right? They, they, they made a career out of it. You know, Beautiful. they made a career out of just fucking prank calling people. I mean, God bless them. Yeah. You know, that was like fucking yeah. selling the pet rock. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so where, where in the West Coast are you from? Southern California? Like where? Hey, we're in the San Fernando Valley. Okay. Hmm. Yep, I haven't been out there a lot, but I've probably been out there about four or five times. My father-in-law used to live in San Diego. Gotcha. Yep. That's three hours south of us. So, okay. Vinny, you have to look at his son owns a company called Thrash and Supply, and they just okay. did did two bike builds, um, completely different. Use the the lowrider ST. Um, and you'll have to take a look and just see what you think and love to hear from you on what what you think about those are insane they were in the harley tent there with sturgis harley tent the um born free show they were at the 120th uh little different style than and i know you have a shop as well what's the name of your shop vinnie demartino motorsports and where's that located it's in uh walden new york yeah how did it find you I kind of you know i, I it used to be more towards motorsports. I'm pretty much just auto repair now, truck and car. Okay. Cause that's just, that's what keeps us really busy. Yeah. But I still like, I, I, I love as a hobby working on motorcycles. I don't like doing it for a business. You know, yeah. I love tinkering, but yeah. So understood. Cars and trucks are my deal. And Mikey and I couldn't fucking uh, put a bike together. I mean, we love riding on me, but at the same yeah. time, we're not, Vinny is, Vinny is Vinny. <laughs> And yeah. junior and all that i mean those guys are uh um, i would i would like to do a long distance ride with mike we've talked about it in the past on scooters yeah, I, would yeah. Do a scooter. yeah. I, I drove down to ocean city maryland on my scooter from new york um, well let, let's do a scooter run man yeah you know what i'll right, tell we'll you, meet what, you guys halfway like at like you the most what? boring part in the u.s well the right. part about <laughs> scooter riding is that you know you're you're taking all back roads you know Right. I think you yeah. double the time, but the experience is just so much superior. Have you ever heard of the cannonball run? Oh, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the old bikes. Go out right not, now. not the television. No, not the, the television. Movie. The MC can cannonball. It's uh, motorcycles coast to coast, but they got to be 1930 or, or older. Oh, no. I know. Younger. Oh, yeah, I've heard of this. Younger. younger. Uh, 1935. I have a friend that kind of bowed out of it. He had like a stripped down uh, kind of like a you know, they have no yeah, and they're rough. That's yeah, they're rough. definitely rough. Rough. The riding. There is, yeah, yeah. He bowed <laughs> out. He was trailering his shit on the side. Yeah. <laughs> What's your definition of scooter? Are you talking like a Vespa? Yeah, like a Vespa. I mean, I have a bunch of them. I have a Vespa 250. That's probably my fastest one. I mean, that'll do 85. It's hey, those dudes week. in Italy were ripping on him, and they yeah. they split lanes, and they you know the organized chaos in the driving and, and oh, scooters over the there. We we have actually. We have actually talked about filming a ride on scooters. Yes. Oh, uh, we gotta get involved. We could all get in three quarter helmets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got a I got a bunch of uh that would be I got phenomenal. Yamaha's I got a ya two Yamaha Vinos and a Yamaha Zuma. They all do about fifty five, sixty. Um, we could do it. We could do I all think. the hamburger spots between you know, and just kill it with food and the scooters. I think we gotta get on the ones that go eighty five miles an hour because on our Harleys we're going 90 to 120 well, everywhere we'll see you guys oh. there yeah yeah, yeah checkpoint we'll meet you at the checkpoint you know, be three four beers deep we'll be putting along you know <laughs> ben likes to drink and ride his scooter anyways <laughs> you know, we're coming clean ben sick of this can't drink oh, anymore you know, a, a scooter run europe would be cool too, right? yeah a be really cool. i tell you a scooter run europe would be awesome that would be but not off the hook. Wait, and then, because you know, in Europe, I mean, you're you're crossing territories and countries in a very, texts. very um, oh. quick fat. I mean, you could be in another country in three hours. You know, whole, right. whole, whole different environment. Right. And, um, and I speak German, by the way, so I can. Ah, I can nice. Them, so. Good. Yeah, when well, we've traveled, he's had to translate, and I think you can see it getting exhausted. Him getting exhausted <laughs> from it. You know, and it's just don't worry. I I don't mind not understanding the language you know right you hear everybody speaking a different language around you just kind of make peace with the fact that it's, blah, 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 blah. it's like stage murmurs or something <laughs> yeah. it is a fucked up language yeah it is what it is when we go there do you do you jump right into the uh the german or does it take you a second it's to get right back into shit it? In the world man when i get off the plane my my mind it, it sort of just 
it, it triggers. Yeah. And when I say something, I don't really, un- I don't even, I, I don't comprehend that I'm actually saying it. Yeah. It, I still think I'm speaking in English, but I'm speaking in German. Yeah. So my, how, my mother was German. How did you learn German or did you serve or what's going on? No, mother was uh, father's military, married a German woman. Uh, she came over when she was 25, went to high school there, uh, went to kindergarten there and college. So, wow. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, oh, that, can you give us some German, brother? That's that's sort of – what's that? Can you give us a little German? Yeah, let me show you. Um, <laughs> what? Yeah. And there's a whole thing with the accent, too. Up, man. <laughs> I just saw Inglorious Bastards and they had some. Inglorious Bastards. Isn't that the funniest thing? I mean, I tell you what, Inglorious Bastards, any fucking movie you see now, Germans are always a goddamn foe, right? I mean, they're always. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, once you go over to Europe, they're like the most liberal people out there. (laughs) Right? Right? You know, it's very. It's the truth. It's the truth. DC, very. But. uh, Welcoming and friendly. Oh, yeah. But hey, listen, it is what it is. And. Um, but you go to Germany, uh, they are the most liberal, especially Berlin. Berlin, you go to Berlin. I mean, they got clubs open from fucking Thursday till Sunday, and everybody and 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 people like sitting in line to get in the clubs. They got like you know the ball, the strings, and the ball in their fucking mouths, and, and the whip and shit what? like that. Yeah, I that's... swear to God, it's the weirdest shit in the world. Like they they literally you. open the club from Thursday till fucking Monday. They don't close, but they're like, listen, if you go in there, don't be uh, you know, you're gonna be culture shocked because um, Mike don't take the wrong oil. ecstasy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mike comes in for an oil change. Hey, uh, uh, Al, it sounds like you should partner up with. The- Vinny and go do a German Italian kind of, you know, hello, hello. The yeah, Italian meats being crazy. served are going to be a little different. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be attached. <laughs> oh, you're getting <laughs> leather suit attached. Yeah. <laughs> it is the weirdest shit uh, in the world. So we, we love to wear backless chaps over here. Just let the ass hang out. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, that won't get While you we're admitting those, uh, clubs over there. <laughs> Um, it's crazy shit. Uh, but yeah. All right. So, so what's the podcast that you guys are doing? Are you bringing guests on? What, what's, how's that rolling for you? We're live. Oh, um, okay. Uh, we're blinking live. Hurry up. Okay. Um, no, the, uh, uh, we've had a couple guests. Uh, one of them was a kid named uh, Lukey Lunchbox who uh, had a really touching story that really hit home. I think uh, during the, the pandemic with a lot of different people, uh, he was our first guest. And then we had this other guest who's kind of lousy. It really went really horribly bad. And he was arrogant. And uh, we had to kick him out of the uh, studio. Uh, I, I won't mention his name. Was. No, it was Vin. <laughs> I, <don't think> it <laughs> was. I figured it was going that way. <laughs> It went pretty well. We had a good time with that. But mainly we just, uh, it's Al and I, and uh, we get a little bounce back from uh, Nick, who's kind of behind the scenes. You don't see him on camera. Um, And uh, we just kind of tackle all kinds of different uh, topics and subjects, anything that comes to mind or any, you know, little anecdotal stories and whatnot. Um, And hopefully we're interesting, but we don't really stick to any particular topic, you know. You know, I think what happened was when we, we, you know, when the first started the show it was trial and error you know yeah i'm assuming you guys maybe have gone through it or not but you know we're trying to figure out what the hell is you know what's 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 good what's not um it, it could have been occ completely related but i i think mikey you know he didn't want that but it definitely has to be occ uh centric as well i mean obviously Vinny is a, a big part of occ and we love having him here um, and it's always going to have that concentration, but at the same time, you know, oh, really a, a sprinkle of everything else going out in the, in the world and what our take on it is and everything of that nature. This guy, Lukey, that we had, um, he was, um, he, you know, he, he was this bigger guy. He wrote this um, heartfelt, warm kind of a letter during the pandemic about trying to meet a, 
uh, nice you girl. know, a, a significant other. Anyway, went to Dave Partnoy and then Barstool. So you familiar with Barstools? Yep. And then um, he started getting traffic flow from a lot of celebrities and that kind of a thing. And he actually sort of blew up uh, on that because of that heartfelt letter. So we had him on the show. It was great. And, um, you know, we're just, um, you know, making our way and trying to figure out um, our dynamics. Yeah well but we love talking about everything and you know mike has some crazy stories he's met everybody you know we're talking about russell crowe he's in russell crowe's house in australia smoking pot um benny has stories you know out the gazoo i mean it's just it's 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 a great time then stole um, those street signs back there yeah, on the way just, here just <laughs> a couple hey, stories. I got a question about that. Sigamore? Is that where the film crew used to live? That Sigamore? I don't know. I didn't take that. Yeah, That's they, what you're they, asking. They me it's probably, right, right, I think it's, right it's, it's illegal to steal really? the streets. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I used well, to I, I think, I mean, credit to you guys because, you know, jumping back into the game and doing some things. And I think people today, you know, the generations are changing to a different way of how the media works. And, there is no way that we could be as successful as we were. We hate it. We hate, I hate it in particular, yeah. but, but we have to use it. And I think with the podcasts and people at work and they can listen to different, like our, once we're done with this, Josh will take care of it. It'll go out into the, the mainstream. So we'll, we have all the different services that it'll run to, um, you know, we have 53 countries that follow us. Uh, there's no way in hell we could do that without having social media. Right. Um, so for some reason, we, you know, we were beholden to it because we have to be. But we're also it, it kind of sucks about, you know, the stories that, you know, once you plug in what you're what you like, then you just get inundated with bullshit. Yeah, and we don't typically get political on the show. Uh, we definitely have our own political views, but we just wanted something positive. And, and we started this thing in February of 2020, just as the pandemic hit. Uh, and but I think it helped us in, in a way because people were locked, especially down in Europe uh, and other countries. People were locked down and they were looking for content. Right. Um, and we didn't stop traveling. We, we packed a Coleman stove in the back of one of my backpack things and put it on the back of the bike and went up into the mountains and cooked hamburgers and had champagne and beans and hamburgers with our wives Beautiful. to show people you can get out. Don't That's stop right. getting out. Get out. And some countries couldn't. Um, but I think it helped us and we, we ran through that. Yeah. I don't even, I mean, if you asked me about pandemic, I'd be like, what pandemic? I fucking didn't no, wear a mask. Yeah. I traveled. I kept going. I didn't listen to anybody. Screw yeah, the right. media. Yeah. And, you know, were you guys GoPro on it? Was Josh with you filming sort of like, uh, a at that or? point we were probably iPhone and some GoPro. Yeah. I think for that particular so episode, he, when we met him, he was still in college and it was kind of like a part time. It was like Lance and I, as old farts, we're not that old, but we're old farts. <laughs> we, for technology, we went to sit down with a guy and, and show us how to edit iMovie mm -hmm. on iPhones. And we're like, what the hell was that conversation? So we walked over to his son's shop and said, Hey, does anyone know anyone that does this stuff? And one of the guys over there, Rob Scott, showed us uh, on his phone. Josh had the, a bunch of buddies and him had gone up to Kern, which is a place up in the mountains here by us and we're camping and Josh had some fire shots and he had a drone shot over the rocks and he had some really cool. So he just put together this really cool little reel before reels were even real. Um, and we're like, get him on the phone. We need to talk to him. And it's awesome. Yeah. So he came in, he was, for the first three months was really kind of just part-time doing our edits. And by, after he graduated by June, it was like, you need to be here full time. We took him on a thousand, you were on a Yamaha what? Yeah, I was on some, I was on a Yamaha FCO seven. 
We took him on a thousand mile ride. It was his first time. We froze his hands off up in the Kit Carson pass. <laughs> we tried to kill him. We it tried to work. kill him. I didn't even know what rain gear was at the time. And it fucking <laughs> snowed and hailed and literally his wet. hands were like beautiful. this. He couldn't. It was like <clears throat> any complaints. Uh, no he, complaints. Nah, my he jaw was frozen more. shut. I couldn't say shit. <laughs> it was a good time. And, and so from that point forward, it was like get him on full full time. Let's let Lance on our. T- you know, we're not going to take any money out of the company. Let's just pay Josh. Let's get something going. And well, he, uh, that's how it all kind of started for us, you know. Well, he, he knows us now. He knows he became part of the family. He's basically, right. he'll know when we're pissed, when we're, he's pissed, when I'm happy, you know, whatever. But we Wait, get, Why aren't you pissed? Because you're and pissed. I'm, I'm fucking, I get pissed. <laughs> so, you, you know, you you learn the idiosyncrasies yeah. of each guy. And so he knows what's up when he's filming and, you know. Well, you, you, you know, from what I heard, from what I've read, Mike and I have talked about it. Whatnot, I think consistency is the key. I mean, you got to continue. You just got to you got to continue, continue and continue because, yeah. you know, you, you put 12 months into it and then you're like, fuck it, uh, I'm done. Then you just wasted 12 months. So you're, exactly. you just if I'm. Would that be accurate in, in that? Perception? Yeah, I mean, we've had we've had a handful of people reach out. That's kind of the best advice you can get or give. You know, um, sometimes things take off, sometimes they don't. But if you don't get consistent, it's not going to happen. But so like you said, I think twelve months is a good example. Like if you don't at least do it for a year, get some data, see how people like it. But uh, you know, keep going after a year for sure. So let me. Ask, are you guys doing any kind of? Uh, when you say you're in 53, you're, you're in multiple countries. Are you doing any kind of editing, like language? Uh, you know, um, okay. That's, so it's- that's something we've thought about. And up until recently, I haven't transcribed any of the videos. Because on YouTube, for example, just on one, one platform, that is, you have to have a written transcript in order for foreign subtitles to automatically populate. So if you, you know, the English ones populate automatically – on YouTube, but you can't just switch the language. The and they're, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, but still, yeah. Ten, I don't know what the percentage is. Don't quote me, but 10 ish percent of all YouTube's viewers speak English. The rest are all these other languages. So I think it's worthwhile to do that, but it's tough. Are you going to do that for a podcast and have just subtitles? Or are you going to talk, you know? Yeah, that's true. yeah. Good question. I just thought Latin America was just a big market. So I didn't know. Oh, big time. It is for sure. Brazil's big. Yeah, yeah, Brazil too. Probably. Well, Germany's big. I mean, you've got you've got, some, you've got some big markets out there that want motor content, yeah. and we have not transcribed, but we've been looking at some different ways. YouTube recently came out with a new tool. Um, we don't transcribe the podcast at all, um, but but we're trying to figure out a way to efficiently do it through YouTube that allow other markets to come in. They'll watch, we get comments all the time, but they're trying to figure out, you know, our, our biggest draw is definitely the U S of course. Um, yeah. Well, Absolutely. you know, the, the guys, we actually speaking of YouTube content, we actually have um, a cooking thing coming out on YouTube. Someone, someone mentioned that. I didn't, I didn't know if it was true. So what's up with that? We all love to cook. Vinny is, Definitely going to be uh, in the mix, and I think Mikey loves you. I love to cook, so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna put all of our skill sets together and see who um, actually is triumphant, right? <laughs> we're gonna have a little bit of a cooking competition, and it'll be rated by, um, by I think the uh, cook at the restaurant that we're gonna be cooking at. What That'll be a good one. I um, like that. I cook every day at my shop. Uh, I got a thirty-six inch flat top at my shop, and uh, I cook every day for the guys. I heard he is pretty mean at cooking, yeah, so I'm a little. I, I, uh, I love it. I'm a little intimidated, uh, intimidated but I'm You're raising gonna, an I'm eyebrow give it a now. shot. I'm raising an eyebrow. Yeah. Is, there, is there a theme behind the food, or is it just like you do your best dish? Tell them the concept, though. Well, the concept that we have right now is um, uh, there, there. There's a place uh, by us, um, um, right on the waterfront. A new restaurant they opened up, Jet Set. Um, in Newburgh, and they're gonna give. They're gonna create. What they're gonna do is, we're each gonna have ingredients. Everybody's gonna. We're gonna have. They're gonna pick a dish, right? 
And the dish is going to be somewhat, you know, make a little complicated, but they're going to give us each the same set of ingredients. We're going to prepare that dish how we would individually. Um, and then we are going to present that dish uh, to the chef. They're going to do a taste test and determine who actually knows what the fuck they're doing in terms of cooking that particular dish. So we're all got the same, you know, we're all got the same shit. We got the same utensils, same ingredients, everything in that. It's how we apply those ingredients. And so all right, we'll, we'll, do is we'll, we'll fly in and then ride to the parking lot. And after you give it to the chef, come out and we'll film us eating it in the parking lot. That'd be one. Try to get you guys a discount. You can't try to. <laughs> is that going to be an ongoing thing, like an ongoing series, or is that one video? Or we're going to give this a uh, shot, and I think um, see determine what see where it goes. We're do a pilot. Yeah. Uh, well, we got a good concept from a viewer. He said, uh, "Cooking with porn, Vinny's way." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm never going to live that one down. I can't believe you made me tell that story. I know. I mean, we have to draw that out of you, Vinny. But hey. Listen, I Look, I, I love to cook, so I'm a sous chef. If you need me to come in and like help, there I'll, we go. He's boom, a fucking sous yeah. chef. I love a good sous chef. All right, see, so he's got credentials. We don't have any of those. I don't have the exactly <laughs> the main. Oh, yeah, so so I don't have yeah. credentials. We got a California restaurant we can go yeah. visit. And I'm not a there. good sous sous chef. I'm a good. I take charge, give people tasks. I That's wanted, what I mean. I don't have a credential. I just I'll slide in there and then I'll take. We'll go. Is. Well, yeah, we're going to do that, and then we got to, um, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out. But at the same time, I think it'll be fun. I think it'll be a great time. Yeah. Right. I, mean, I, I think everybody here is competitive. I could tell Vinny's definitely, I mean, Vinny, obviously, you know, being uh, part of the OC uh, thing, he's very particular in what he does. Uh, Mike, yeah. Mike loves to cook. Um, I do as well. So it, it'll be fun. I think it'll be a great time. Um and see who comes out on top because uh but it'd be cool if you guys wrap that into like a little charity thing too we have you can see behind us a little bit but or maybe you can't no. on this shot but we have a, a huge patch wall here where we support uh men and women that have served uh, both armed forces uh police fire you know etc and uh we always try to give back to those that that give to us and and uh in fact, we have a, a really cool box here that we had Chris Kyle and and also the lone survivor uh, Marcus Luttrell, wow. a guy that carried him off the mountain. So it's uh, got a lot of history in this place. Cool. I think. That, cool. I mean, there's nothing better. Than, I mean, in today's um, what's going on in the world today, and what's going on in in, in the U.S. today, you know, giving back to. Uh, you know, first responders, uh, military, police, firemen. Uh, I, don't, I don't see anything better. Than that. I mean, yeah, for sure. It's definitely good. But when you, when you travel like we travel and you get in these small towns, you get between California and New York and you go ride through there and you meet people. Right. Mm. There are so many great people out there. Just turn the TV off, go meet the people and you'll think nothing's wrong. I 100%. I can, I, agree. Maybe I can imagine how many you know, through OCC, you probably met. We're just so at many. gas stations, right? You know, yeah, of yeah. course. Gas stations online. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I just That's even true. even my customers in general. Right. Like yeah. People, I mean, I have the greatest customers in the world, and it's like, if you don't watch any of this bull crap, these people are just great. Now, do you do you get thrown off guard sometimes? Like people come in, they don't know <laughs> until they see you. They're like, no, oh. I got I got a really, I mean that. I've been doing this since 2012, 2013. Right. So yeah, I, I got a pretty good clientele, and I'm pretty, you know, I'm I'm at max capacity. Gotcha, gotcha. Yep. But have you ever been thrown off guard? But like they come in, they're like, "Holy shit, you've been from uh, no." But you know what's funny? Uh, yeah, I get that sometimes. Yeah, but, I'm sure. Um, I get people even like YouTube videos. I I don't do a ton of them, but I'll I'll do them just on different cars I'm working on, right. and I'll get some. I get people from the city that are like, ah, nobody would do this to my car. No, come on, you know. Gotcha. So, I think it's um, giving back is what it's about. But you guys, you guys are no joke in terms of how many miles you put in and all that. Yeah, they're legit. I mean, jeez. Yeah. Christ. And we change our own oil. <laughs> <laughs> Why wouldn't you? Right? Would you feel confident if you didn't? Right. No. 
OCC know. used to do that, right? Know, they did yeah. oil chains for like 150 bucks or some yeah, shit like that. Or right. I know I couldn't, I couldn't be riding my bike in confidence if somebody else is working on it. I agree. It's like you know your bike. If you work on it, you know it. I mean, if something really heavy needs to be done, you got to get a mechanic that knows what he's doing because right. we're, you know. But yeah, you're general. We'll, but we'll be part of that. Right. Like we, we'll tear, if we tear apart an engine and the cases, or we'll be part of it. We're just not doing all the heavy lifting. Right. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Have, have you guys gotten down to, um, to Florida at all uh, lately? To where? To Florida. Have you been, uh, so we were there for for uh, Daytona, and then we dropped into Miami, and then went down to the Keys and back. And we really screwed that up because we went down and back into the Keys the same day, <laughs> and it was the most horrible ride I think we've been on in years because all the traffic and we were expecting something different. Like we thought we were going to see more water, and instead you're on the inside of the islands, and and we screwed up. We should have. We just didn't have time, but we should have went down to the Keys and spent a day or two and just put our, our feet in the sand and enjoyed it. Instead, we had to come back out. Um, well, I was going to say, because in Pinellas, they um, I don't know if you ever made it to the OCC shop here. It was just enormous. But in Pinellas, they opened up the uh, OCC Roadhouse and Cafe. Have you been there, Vinny? Were you ever, ever, uh, I've never been to the one in Newburgh. Oh, he never. Okay. I wouldn't even step foot in that place. I saw an episode where you did step foot in that place. Only, <laughs> only to steal a bike back. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> my you, know, you know what? This what? is it's about, of, uh... it's about time we had it out. <laughs> well, Mikey, go at it. Oh, shit. No, I mean, pull it out. Oh, See, I'm, plugging. I'm, pl sorry, I'm trying to mind. plug. Uh, I'm no. trying to plug. Mike, sorry, yeah, I apologize. Been, I got way <laughs> off the mark. And, yeah, you've been sending me some uh, right. threatening text messages lately. <laughs> I have. <laughs> but it is a hell of a place, the OCC Roadhouse Cafe. And, oh, it's uh, wonderful. Like, yeah, yeah, I went down there to visit my father recently, and uh, he's living on a farm. I saw your father's sister uh, the other day. She came to my shop for an oil change. Elaine? Yeah. Yeah, she's always down there. Yeah, she's yeah they're two peas down. in a pod. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah have a good time, man. He's so doing a massive facility. There. Yeah, yeah. Man. Starting out to scuba dive. He's like 75 and trying to scuba dive and all. Yeah, he's pretty doing impressive. Yeah. Yeah, he keeps moving. I, I know this is irrelevant, but your your father actually DM'd me. Um, I, I took a motorcycle up in the bed of a truck on a rail on a ramp with two milk crates and ran it up myself. Uh, Josh actually was helping little bit as well and he's like i couldn't do that and i'm like so i responded back you couldn't do what and he's like take the motorcycle up the ramp and i'm like oh so <laughs> i didn't know what he was so of course yeah he's not uh i could see him flipping out on that <laughs> but yeah, it was it was a cordial I'm... interaction <laughs> yeah yeah uh, i guess it's a desired one right <laughs> that's almost Depending like on what uh, you desire yeah um, I can remember still, yeah, when we went to Europe. Remember, it was cousin Nick? Remember? Yeah, yeah, my cousin, cousin Nick. Ran so off we got the on, the, yeah, ran out the plane. So we're um, we're literally going to Europe. We have um, I don't know, uh, probably about uh, maybe maybe a thousand, you know, little post signature, you know, for for signing things over there in Europe and whatnot. And um, um, cousin Nick, he he has this. It, he, he afraid of flying hates it right but he looked so great that day man so we get to the airport we're in newark um we go through customs and you know we're sitting there we're waiting to board the plane and you know he's julie i think didn't maybe he took a colonic pin or some shit i don't know he took was, it late if he, he took it. some kind of volume something to sort yeah. of you know even him out to get on the plane or whatever so um and we're talking about europe because he's never been to europe and and uh, we finally get them on the plane. So we're all, everybody's sitting, you know, you know, you're waiting to fly. The door hasn't been closed yet. And for some reason, he's sitting by me. I don't know where you were sitting, but then the, the old man was sitting in the back. And, you know, he's starting to fidget a little bit. And they're like, you know, thank you, you know, for 
everybody rely, you know, we're going to be momentarily pushing off or whatever. And uh, he fucking, he gets up, he goes, I need some water. I'm like, okay. So I see him dart to the left and he starts walking down right, you know, the aisle out of the goddamn plane. He literally, you know, whether you know how the door is open, right? And and that once you crack that seal and you step over it, you're done. So he steps over that seal, and everybody's like, uh, you know, the uh, flight attendants and all that. They're like, uh, "Are you with?" We're like, "Yeah, we're with." So we have to go over to the front of the plane. And we can't crack that seal either. And he's like, fuck that. I'm not flying. And he leaves. But if we would have cracked that seal, we would have been not able to fly as well. The well, only issue was everybody in the fucking plane knows now what the holdup is. So we get back in the seats. They have to take the luggage out of the fucking plane, right? Because at the same time, you can't fly with the luggage that he already checked in. But ah, yeah. Well, what a oh. great day that was! What a great day. Plus, the airline ten grand yeah, and didn't bro, get the yeah, uh, didn't get the company a refund, which he could have easily gotten with a note from his doctor. <laughs> so he went to Lincoln on that. This is a cousin of mine. He's a sweetheart. Oh, uh, but he's the best. I love hey, him. Mike, he just had this. He just had this. He could not do it. He could not. You know. Well, yeah, I was just yeah. that do it. that. You know that that's. Fear. Uh, but he was just sitting there. It was just the weirdest thing because he was just sitting there and he looked like everything was great. And then all of a sudden just stood up and walked the fuck off. It was not like he was in a panic or anything like that. He was like, I'm going to get some water. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And then Left. right off the plane. It was the weirdest thing in the world. Oh, hey, right. Mike, you remember when we flew to Australia? Yes. Flew home. We, do you remember? what? Yeah, it was pretty fucked up. What? Oh, what? <laughs> What happened? This I took freak. a bunch of different drugs. Like they were given to me by different people on the film crew. I got know? pictures of the <laughs> I feel like Judy Garland. We, we were in first class <laughs> on a 747, right? So you're in the nose. Yeah. And you get a seat that kind of lays down into a bed. Huh? And it, it was it real was, nice. It was really nice. Mike's <laughs> Mike's area. Do you re- I still have pictures of this. I was no, I remember I took he, Ambien. I, I took I, bike. Yeah, he, I think he was out of his mind. He was walking I'm around. I'm seeing a purple haze. I'm not kidding. I've never <laughs> yeah, seen anything like, like that, even on, on hallucinogenics in my life. Yeah, it, it, it looked like you took like the por- portion of your luggage that you put all your Q-tips and all that stuff in. Uh-huh. It looks like you just shook it all over his area. <laughs> <laughs> his area is like totally normal. <laughs> Mike's is down just, down Mike's down. Is there's <laughs> shit all over the place. Oh, and Mike, Mike can't even be found. He's walking around. Yeah, I was socializing <laughs> with people, trying to get people in coach to come up because there were empty seats up in first class. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, you can't do God. that. You know, I'm no. that, sir. I'm like fucking forcibly detaining people. And that's a long flight. Let me tell you what. It's a very long flight. I feel like we just got back. Yeah, no kidding. Jeez. <laughs> It's like, nice. you know, it's funny that nowadays that shit they would they would probably ground the plane. You know how they you know, chase it, you know I mean? yeah, they tackle arrested, me, put a knee in my some back, kind of bullshit like that back then. Chase oh. him, put him in uh, straps, and get him off the plane. I yeah. had my knee in his back, and then I remember yeah. I was sitting, I was mad, I was crazy, madcap, but I remember feeling that way, but also feeling really high. <laughs> and he kept trying to go to sleep, and I was just staring at him like a maniac. <laughs> And he kept waking up and looking at me like, what the fuck are you doing? Stop staring at me. Like he's ready to kill, kill me, but I was just laughing. And then I went back to staring at him again, you know, while he slept. Which, right? Am I wrong? No, okay. Yeah, wrong. it's all coming back. Oh. <laughs> so let me, he was out of his mind. You got to tell him the Russell Crowe thing because you were part of that, right, Vinny? No, I wasn't. I, I, I have met wasn't, up later. Yeah. All show. right. Yeah. The Russell Crowe says he's at Russell Crowe's house. You got to take it from there. Um, what did we do? Oh, he uh, rolled me a doobie during dinner and handed it to me <laughs> right in front of his parents. And they were kind of disgusted by it, <laughs> you know. And then my father looked over and he didn't really, you know, he knew I smoked, but I didn't do it in front of him, you know. And he looked over and saw, then he looked away, kind of. And I could have just like threw the doobie aside or something, like, yeah, I don't need that. But I just shoved it in my pocket, <laughs> kept eating dinner, then went outside and smoked. Then we stayed at his guest house and watched uh, Gladiator. <laughs> which is a lot of fun, you know. Russell Crowe. 
That's all I got. That's all you got. (laughs) (laughs) No. I just yeah. thought that was a great Australia. I mean, oh, that was fun. You're going to talk about Australia. That's a great story. Oh, I man. watched the Australia episode the other day. You did? Yeah. On on Max. Yeah? Yeah, I showed my son. He He's never seen any of that. They have the two guys, Paulie and Bundy, in there? Who? Remember? Oh, yeah. But yeah. And yeah. Now, yep. We watched yeah. when we got pulled over by the cops. Remember that? Yes. And we were at all them... Uh, the kangaroo rustlers, the all the girls. <laughs> They're all female kangaroo yeah. kangaroo rustlers. They did They're shit. rough, man. Yeah. Was... This is the kind of shit we'll talk Beautiful. about on the podcast. And yeah. great. Yeah. You know what I mean, um, yeah. that was good. Good stuff. Real life stuff, yeah. man. Jack uh, picking him up by his ass and um, shaking him around a bit. Yeah. Yeah, Shaq yeah. likes Wait, my I ass. I don't know about it. Every time I see Shaq, he, well, not every time. I don't see him very often, but I see him a few times. But he's grown. Fairly fond of me, and he grabs me by the ass, <laughs> lifts me up, which I'm not used to. So I'm like ready to freaking herniate, and, you know, dancing like we're in, the, in 1990, 1993, listening to hip hop or something. And he can do whatever he wants because he's Shaquille O'Neal, you know. <laughs> no, man, you let him grab your ass cheeks. Man. That's all there is to it. How'd you feel? Oh my lord! Oh, violated, but I mean, in a good way. Everybody loves Shaq. <laughs> in a good way. Shaq a doobie. You know, but the, he's a he's a fucking monster. Was, you guys were building that bike uh, with the Shaq bike. I wasn't involved. Okay. I, I oh, okay. Oh, well, he, he had a shoe. <laughs> I mean, when I'm telling you the fucking shoe in in. in it it looked like a boat. It was probably about twenty four inches. I was just thinking, Jesus Christ! And he wears that on his I wiener. Feel, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I feel you know sorry that. for the women. Well, you know, yeah, whatever. We're close. I told you. Mm-hmm. We tend- well, he, he's he's definitely a huge guy. I mean, yeah. when you you walk up to him, you're just like, holy shit, this is a big man. Yep. And he's not like a skinny guy. He's a big guy. I don't know how people you get that. Talk, you could talk to him, oh. but. He seems like a sweetheart, but you know him. But I mean, he's, he's, he's a very nice guy. guy. Very, very sweet. Yeah, yeah, he's a great guy. We, I, I had the chance to meet uh, Kareem as well, and uh, Kareem's a little skinnier, right? But he's as tall, but his thighs are as big as. Sh- I mean, they're just, they're just massive. I was going to say, who's taller, Kareem or uh, Shaq? I think Kareem's a little taller, or they're they're roughly they're pretty Kareem, close. Kareem's got him now, but Kareem may yeah. have him. Yeah, but Shaq's uh, probably got 50 pounds on him, right? Yeah, Shaq's just a huge human being. Yeah. And I'll tell you, the other guy that's big is Magic. He's huge for a point guard at 6'9", and his hand just drapes, and it, it's just yeah. it's, it's amazing. It's amazing how you, uh, human beings can be that yeah. fucking big. Oh, yeah. When I we mean, built that crazy. Jets bike. Remember Will we Chamberlain. Oh, yeah. there you go. Another one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, any any professional athletes will yeah, make you feel like you're, uh, yeah. you're just teeny. We hung out with those guys, all the linebackers. Yeah, professional linemen. Yeah, I was Holy like, shit. where do these people come from? Yeah. <laughs> They're, the giant. They're the biggest I, of the big. I, I, yeah, I didn't think humans got that big. <laughs> and they can run fast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They, they were athletes. They were yeah, yeah. not getting away from them. Right? I was never was. so impressed. <laughs> <laughs> top one percent but we definitely got to do some kind of thing in europe i think that would be a great venture to do together well i think i think we need to do either something there or something in the u.s next oh, year sure. yeah here too. let's right. get together maybe we get on your podcast in a couple months and rekindle but you guys have been great this has been awesome we're literally an hour and a half which is like just shooting the shit like we talked about you know yeah yeah and uh, we appreciate it. We appreciate you guys reaching out. And we say this all the time. We've got some new friends now. And, and um, we'll, we'll make sure Vince keeps us all in touch. Uh, and let's figure something out. You know, next year we should get together. I'd love to break some bread with you guys. Uh, and maybe we get some scooter run in or something. Who knows? Yeah, any kind of riding. Bike, I, I- scooter. Anything. I think Cooking. that would be great. And 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 co- uh, thank you for, you know, obviously having us on. Um, you know, a- any collaboration is, a, you know, it it, it just it, it it came easy. And and we want to um, thank you just for uh, giving us the opportunity to, uh, you know, to to let you know what we're doing and uh, yeah. vice versa. And uh, definitely uh, collaborate sure. at uh, at some time in the future again. 
So yeah. we've got your stuff in the description. Where do they find you guys? You guys can find us on every social media outlet, Mikey and Al Podcast. We're on YouTube, Apple Music, Amazon Music, anywhere you can find podcasts. We're also on all social media platforms, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, you name it. Awesome. Boom. Al and I can remember to say yeah, shit like that. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, for like us, uh, view us, we yeah, give a thumbs up to us. Give us a uh, phone call, <laughs> download. Uh, I think upload. Right. <laughs> well, go go back, subscribe, thumbs up, yeah. like. There if you get are. a moment, go back and look at the Jay Leno video on the YouTube channel. It's pretty cool. I made sure to have the background yeah. music really yeah. yeah. loud. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Guys, thank Guys, you thank, so much. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. Thank yeah. you so much for having us. One second, we'll close. We'll come right back to you. Great Absolutely. to meet you for sure. Absolutely. Thank Likewise. You guys. Likewise. All right, all right. Well, everybody, thanks for watching. That was probably way too loud as I screamed into the mic. Um, <laughs> but another good show. It's always that nice was to fun. talk this shit. Those yeah, guys are great. This shit. You know, we, we're like, so what are we going to get into here? And we're like, let's just let it vibe. And, and it vibed. It was like just... Six guys hanging out in the garage having a good time. I like that kind of stuff. Really cool. Uh, make sure you go take take a look at our drop this week. It was day four of Sturgis Run. Uh, day four and five. And five. Yes, sir. We've got a great shop opening up, so stay tuned for the grand opening. If you're local, if not, you can still send us a, a love tap. Boom, there. Yeah. Uh, they can uh, download we're really you. excited about the, yeah. the retail store. People yeah. actually showed up while, to that shop while Paul was there. While we were doing our thing, so that's where I went. Oh, really? Yeah, people are uh, still showing up, I guess. They're vibing it. They're vibing it. It's going to be great. Yes, sir. Well, happy anniversary yeah. to myself and to Lance and his Together? wife and my guys wife, anniversary? Teresa. Uh, we fought last night. We're good today. We should probably celebrate tomorrow. Let's go to dinner like yep. we do. Yep. All right. Thank you all. With that being said, don't forget to check out TulaneLaugh.com. we got parts, we got blogs, and we got... Uh, yeah, we got those, we have those things. To be interesting well. people. So we'll see you down the road. Down, down the road. road. I'm going to end the stream and then 